Um, so the format of the AMA will be a conversation between myself and the team, uh, and there'll be opportunity for questions at the end, should anybody have any. Uh, so on the call today, we have Jen, who is a blockchain researcher and chief executive officer of Vault DeFi. And we also have the developer, Mark, who is the innovator of both Surge and Vault. Uh, Jen describes uh, Mark as a visionary in terms of DeFi technologies. Uh, so firstly, uh, please could you introduce yourself, uh, Jen and Mark, and tell us more about your experience and background. Sure. Thank you for having us, Robotic. We really appreciate it. Um, I guess just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada. I work uh, for my federal government here in integrations for blockchain. I specifically work with small and medium enterprises that uh, do product and service management. Uh, I try and ensure that whatever those companies are doing is accessible to blockchain, uh, whether that's private or public blockchain, but I do consulting based on that for my government and ensuring that they are able to become uh, large buyers and sellers for our country on an international level, moving uh, into the new technology that we're all adapting to. Um, and I am very fortunate to be sitting as uh, the CEO of Vault DeFi and assisting um, many other people who are coming into the uh, innovative space of investing into digital assets and commodities, feel a little bit more comfortable and confident in the choices that they're making where they uh, invest their money. Wow, thank wow, you for thank that. It sounds like you've got a lot of experience. Uh, it's, it's really interesting the, the world that we're in at the moment. Uh, and can we have an introduction from you, Mark, as well, please? Yeah, of course. So um, my name's Mark. Uh, I've been in the space for uh, the past year, uh, mostly as a developer. Uh, I started, um, making math videos, kind of teaching people about solidity and uh, how blockchain stuff works. But I, I've kind of stepped away from that recently and I've, I've more gone fully into development. Uh, I've done a bunch of projects, whether it be tokens, contracts, things to interact with tokens or wrap around them. Um, it's pretty cool. So I've, I've mostly stayed in the space lately. I haven't really done much other work. Um, I created Surge. Uh, I've worked with Vault for a while. I've, I've written their contracts. Um, I was on the SafeMoon team for a short while, uh, made a few contracts for them, helped that made their SafeMoon swap, uh, their liquidity locker and the verifier for um, uh, Mooncraft to work and stuff like that. A uh, couple of random other projects, you know, I've, I've, I work on Useless. I'm their chief blockchain officer there as well. I uh, created the furnace for them. Um, made, mostly just, uh, cool things that you can do in DeFi that you go outside of just tokens, you know, more like ways to interact with tokens, way to, uh, ways to, uh, not manipulate tokens, but, um, use them outside <clears> of just <throat> buying, holding, selling and trading them, uh, which is pretty cool. Such as like token lockers, like stuff that I'm going to be, we'll, we'll be talking about that we're doing for vault in the near future too, yeah. specifically like blockers and X tokens and, uh, even surge tokens in general. Um, I'll be able to talk more on that then. But yeah, uh, I'm Mark. That's my introduction. <laughs> yeah, impressive. It sounds like you've got some uh, really solid experience, and uh, it's really exciting to you know be at the beginning of DeFi, DeFi and see what's happening there. It sounds like uh, you know you're right there at the beginning with the vision, uh, you know, and you've got a lot of uh, interesting concepts that you've actually uh, you know formulated yourself by the sounds of it, and you've had some big involvement in Safe Moon, which is amazing. Um, okay then, so if we just progress into, you know, introducing more about the ecosystem and what your mission is uh, and your vision, uh, if you could talk about, you know, the journey so far as well. Sure. Um, I guess we could start with uh, the original um, token that we put to market was Safe Vault. Uh, that token uh, came as a wrap token that was going to reward our holders in um, in reflections in Safe Moon. Um, it went off to market really successfully. Um, we we're really proud of uh, the launch as well as the community that we were able to establish with it. Um, and then had progressed that once we had launched that token, why wouldn't we start to develop what we were discussing, which is maybe a suite of tokens that worked um, kind of hand in hand together that gave our investors a little bit more uh, flexibility and options in regards to purchasing and investing into other tokens. Um, 
I think that they work hand in hand really well together the way that we're developing them. And it allows people to do diversification with commodities or assets um, in a bit of a more fluid way to do it, utilizing kind of a versatile uh, vehicle system of being all within one umbrella. Um, we've mm. been blessed to be able to work directly with the surge team, uh, their unique uh, kind of proprietary way of developing their uh, contracts benefits our shareholders because of the way that it mitigates risk. Um, I'll maybe let Mark speak a little bit about Surge. Uh, he's certainly the specialist in why it's so unique and why we benefit so drastically from it from our investor standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can talk I can talk on that a little bit. So the, the reason why Surge would be um, preferred in a reflections-based token like this, it, I wouldn't say it mitigates risk, but it, uh, it, it's a hedge against uh, downward, downward movement from the market. So um, a standard token, you, know, you, you buy it, you hold it, and you sell it at its current market value um, whenever you want to. With a surge wrap token, it, it's slightly different. It, it, all it is is a wrapping around another asset. So take surge Ethereum, for instance. When you, when you buy surge Ethereum, uh, you buy Ethereum at the current market value. Uh, you're basically trading Ethereum, but it's it's a wrapped version of it that allows people who buy it to have an appreciating um, bag of Ethereum over time. And that's done through fees on entry and exit. So you can, um, if you buy Surge Ethereum, you're, you're taxed a small fee. It's like five, six percent right off the bat. Um, and every following transaction, whether it be a buy, a sell, a transfer, that raises the amount of Ethereum you can claim at any given time. Um, so, for instance, people who got uh, ETH ball at the beginning uh, have been getting rewarded in Surge Ethereum. And at the, at the very start, uh, when, when ETH ball started uh, rewarding in Surge Ethereum, Surge Ethereum was worth 1 billion Surge Ethereum was 0 0.005 ETH. And it's gone up about 75% from that. So, the same amount of Surge Ethereum is worth 0 0.0082 ETH now. So, holders of ETH ball who are very bullish on Ethereum as the underlying asset have um, not only received reflections in Ethereum, but the reflections they've seen in Ethereum have doubled, almost, not not quite doubled. It's gone up about 65, wow. 70%. So, it allow, so what Surge does is it allows you to, um, to gain a further appreciating version of it. And instead of you buying in and um, losing your 6% right off the bat, you can just receive it as reflections and um, just wait over time and let, it, let the compounding uh, take into effect. So the, the Surge Ethereum partnership was really was, was really cool seeing how it um, how they worked so well together as, as the volume went in into the Surge token it, it raised the value of the the Surge underlying asset for everybody else um, and then it in turn benefited all the holders so it, it is really it, it is really cool um, specifically uh, I'll stop talking about all the mumbo jumbo in a second but the, the best part about Surge is how. When, when someone sells the underlying asset to redeem it, that actually raises the price more than buying or transferring it does. So what Vault does mm. is it purchases the surge token, which raises the value of the underlying asset. It then transfers it, which also raises it. And then the user then sells it to redeem their ETH. And when they do that, um, when they actually redeem their ETH, they raise the value of the surge token for everybody else. So it's really a game of whales at this point. It's um, who has the strongest hands for, for holding surge because the people that hold it in surge will gain the best value. The, the last person to sell a surge token gets the best deal. Um, even if everyone else sells, if you're the last person to sell, you get a better deal than everyone else, which is pretty cool. Um, and, and really plays well with the whole reflections aspect that Vault's bringing, especially with Bitcoin Vault. Um, as we'll talk about in a second, you can now choose the surge token you get back based on uh, which underlying asset you like the most. Okay, so like kind of in the ecosystem currently, uh, am I right in understanding there's this free token at the moment? Is that right? Yes, under the Included gold the token, there's three, yes. And well, Surge also has their own tokens, and they have a few more than that. Yeah, well, there, there's okay. two, but there's, the third one is coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's fair. That is fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the partnership, is it a partnership between Vault and Surge then? Like, kind of, you, you both have different tokens in your uh, relevant, you know, is it two separate ecosystems that you know intertwine together? Um, I would say Surge is certainly an ecosystem. Uh, Vault DeFi, not necessarily an ecosystem, but a complementary token that works really well together with theirs. 
Um, mm. We are not. We are um, on the BSC network, which would be the ecosystem that we're established to. Um, however, um, what we do and what how we're able to utilize Surge uh, as a collaboration certainly benefits. I would say both both um, companies together. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so so you have a partnership together, and does that like kind of you know go in, go towards like kind of marketing partnerships? Uh, how far does it go? Is it just development? You know, like kind of what what involvement do you have with each other's communities? Sure. Um, yeah, so it would it, it would definitely blanket both of those. Uh, we do look to do more and more things uh, together. However, because we uh, are with Certic, which is the security company that does the monitoring and the auditing of both our smart contracts and market sentiment for us, um, it's always advisable that as a token, you don't branch together with other tokens for security reasons. So um, mm -hmm. we do try and market ourselves somewhat separately on the public scale. But when we are able yeah. to do um, large events uh, let's just say for example the world blockchain summits and things of that nature we do intend to do those things together so easier for our investors to see our products together there's the benefit of having both when they're together for many different reasons but um i think yeah. we do definitely market together we do develop together uh if surge is looking to do something with their asset uh, it's certainly the first asset that we'll look to also put a vault with um, and that's kind of the beauty and benefit of working in collaboration with not only development, but entire teams in DeFi. Um, I'm hoping to see more and more of that moving towards the future where it isn't just us, that there are many other companies doing amazing things in this space. And um, I think to see passive growth, growth opportunities for many of us, but also for DeFi, um, it would be nice yeah. to see us be able to do more partnerships and more collaborations with other teams in a similar way that we're doing it together ourselves here. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. You, you mentioned SafeBeam, like, kind of, have you got a partnership with them or is it just like a soft partnership or? No partnerships there. No, no collaboratory work as well with them. Um, we do um, definitely hope to see where they expand to, where their blockchain takes them, where their exchange goes. Um, I know for our investors, they're certainly interested in the opportunity to be able to work on that. Um, we have uh, applied for uh, wallet placement as well as exchange placement when they are available to do so. Uh, our applications went in last week, so that's something that's kind of yeah. unique and we're excited about. But otherwise, um, in terms of working with them, I personally was a scholar with them. I know that Mark was a scholar with them as well, but he certainly did contract development as well. Um, mm. mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so let's move into some of the development side of it then. I know you touched upon uh, like a brief explanation of Surge Mark. Um, I'm sure some people still don't fully understand it. Uh, could you, you know, maybe explain the concepts of Surge, like kind of maybe in some more detail or? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I'll try my best to not make it full of technical <laughs> mumbo jumbo too. Um, so Surge itself doesn't, it doesn't need to be a token. It could have easily been just a smart contract people interacted with. The reason I made it a token is one for ease of mind. You know, people don't like to just see their, their money disappear. You know, you, you like to see some sort of representative of shares uh, of one way or another. So how it works is the total supply is a value that is never constant. It's always increasing and decreasing based on market sentiment. There is not a fixed supply at all. Um, as people buy surge or stake their asset into surge, the total supply increases. And as people sell, the total supply decreases. And it's done so in a way that every type of transaction, every buy, every sell, every transfer will raise the, the price of surge tokens relative to their underlying asset, whether that's USD, whether that's ETH, Bitcoin, ADA, anything. So the way that that's done is there's a, the, the price is a ratio. It is the total supply of tokens divided by um, the number. So it's, yeah, it's the number of underlying asset tokens there are. How many ETH are in this pool divided by how many tokens there are in existence. And what that does is it provides a real market value as well. So I don't know if, you, if, if you've all noticed this, but there's some tokens with very small liquidity pools. And if you look yeah. on say, KuCoin or Bogged, their market cap will be like 100 million. And you look in their liquidity pool and there's only like a million dollars in there. And what that means is mm. no one could ever sell a hundred million dollars worth because that, that money doesn't exist. Uh, all mm. you can sell is what's in the liquidity pool and surge doesn't have this problem. 
every single person that owns surge can sell it at the same time and get the exact amount they were expecting to get um, with the added benefit wow. that the last person that sells gets the best deal because of the fact that when a user sells it evaluates how many tokens they should redeem for their supply and it taxes mm. it it takes a little bit less and sends them back a little bit less about six percent less on most of them but it still mm -hmm. takes all their tokens and destroys it just deletes it from supply and when that happens that ratio of tokens to underlying asset actually increases so even mm -hmm. though they cashed out if they would have cashed out tax-free the price wouldn't have changed it would have removed the in an equal ratio you know if it was uh 10 surge tokens for one us dollar if they redeemed one us dollar 10 surge tokens would be destroyed but in this sense 10 surge tokens are still destroyed but they only cash out 0.9 us dollars or 0.94 us dollars so that actually inflates that ratio of supply to underlying asset allowing everyone else to redeem a larger percentage. And the same thing happens on buys and on transfers. There's just a smaller percentage. It's usually two to 4% that just gets destroyed. So if I have a hundred tokens and I send it to you, you only receive 96. So nothing actually okay. happens with the underlying asset, but that ratio drops again. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it always is something like kind of a monitor when I look at PooCoin and I'm like looking at the liquidity, uh, safe moon is an example, you know, if, uh, realistically people couldn't sell billions of dollars in safe moon and, you know, for it to be sustaining, uh, it requires a belief in the actual token itself from the holders to keep it going, I guess. Uh, but this is an interesting concept that the liquidity is, you know, everyone can sell at the same time. Uh, and it's like a tax based on first come first serve gets the higher tax. Is that right? No, nope. uh, the tax is the same. It's actually the last person who sells that gets the best deal. Um, since our liquidity is a hundred percent, everyone can just okay, yeah. out as normal. And there, there's no wonky uh, slippage. No one uh, gets worse deals as it goes. Um, you actually, yeah, you get a better deal depending on how strong your hands are, which is pretty cool. Another okay. another interesting point I'll just hit really quick is the fact that Surge itself is not and will not be on exchanges. Uh, you don't buy it on exchanges. You you actually buy the token through the token itself. So there's two methods mm -hmm. of buying it. You can either send BNB to it and it buys the token for you and stakes it, or you can actually provide it your underlying asset. Say you have Binance pegged Ethereum. You can go to it and you can stake in your Ethereum and get minted tokens as well. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the case with the previous Ethereum, but um, as we move the, the new surge token standard we've been using uh, introduced that staking feature, which is really cool because you don't even need external money to buy it. You can just have the underlying yeah. asset, move it in and take it out when it's appreciated enough. Mm. Okay, uh, so you've switched upon surge. Uh, I'm not sure if it's you or Jenny who's best to answer, but could you just explain Vault in, in some more detail? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I thought that's, I, I thought it was a question on surge. I, I didn't mean to keep talking about it too long, but, um, oh, no, it, it, it was a question. No, on surge. Happy to have uh, you do it. Yeah. 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 Um, of course. The, the, the second part was vault as well. Uh, if you yeah, could so, explain that. So I'm going to touch. Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk about it generally and then I'll touch on the new Bitcoin vault. So the way that vault works now and is going to be working, um, from, from here on out, from here on out is, uh, it's a tax token, as we've been seeing um, in DeFi in DeFi recently, and the tax is divided. So buy and buy and transfer taxes differ from sell taxes. Um, a buy and a transfer tax, uh, whatever the percentages may be, we're starting it out at five percent for buy and a transfer tax. When someone buys vault from a liquidity pool or transfers it to someone else, um, five percent of their tokens or whatever percent it is just gets deleted from supply similar to surge in, in, in that way it doesn't have a surge effect at all but it's similar in, in, in that aspect i brought some of the flavors from surge over um, into the new bitcoin vault so those tokens just get erased from supply um, on a buy and on a transfer on a sell though there's a much larger tax uh, we've been going with 30 percent lately which is which is large mm -hmm. it's incredibly large but what that 30% does is it gets allocated in a few different ways. A small percentage of it um, goes to marketing. A very, very small percentage of it gets uh, burned again. So it's different, not as much as the buy percentage gets burned, but a smaller percentage does. And, and that's done for price positivity. I'll go, over, I'll go over that in a moment. But the majority 
uh, 90, 92% of the selfie goes into reflections. So, um, originally what we would do is we would reflect other vault tokens as well, but we've changed that. And now, um, a percentage of that BNB goes into buying and burning ETH fault and safe fault, the other two vault tokens in the ecosystem, because we want them all to, uh, to interact with each other in some way. But 80%, the majority of that selfie goes into reflections. So that gets sent to what we call our distributor, which is a contract that we wrote that um, keeps notes of everyone's shares of vault tokens. So when you move yeah. your vault around, you tell the distributor how many shares you have now. And that just tracks everyone's percentages. And as it gets BNB, a user can go to the distributor if you have enough tokens and you can tell it, I want to get this surge token back or I want to get this search token back, or I want to get whatever back. And as long as it's an approved token with us, the distributor keeps note of it. And um, every day, twice a day, depending on um, transaction volume and, and how long we wait between, between transfers, it'll buy that token that you want and send it to you um, mm -hmm. passively. So if there's a lot of sell action, you're going to get a lot more of that token. So in an event of a massive sell down, if there's uh, say a hundred thousand dollars in, um, in cells, about $28,000 of that is going to go towards reflection. So if you hold say 1% of the token, you're going to get 280 bucks from that one hundred dollar, a hundred thousand dollar sell down. Um, mm -hmm. so it's good in a mitigation factor because of that. And the other reason why I really like it is because of this just deletion from supply. So as people buy it, um, they're able to redeem less. So g give a situation where someone just wants to buy and sell it quick. If they buy yeah. it, um, all their BNB goes in to the, to the liquidity pool and that raises the value, but they can only claim 95% of those tokens back. So even if they were able to sell it tax free, they would only be able to sell 95%. So buying already has an increased, I call it price positivity, um, not in a financial advice kind of a way, but that's just the term I used to describe it. And reversely, yeah. when a user sells, there's a small fee that's destroyed and burnt and not included in the sell, which means that if there was no buy fee and someone sold, um, they wouldn't even be able to sell all of their assets. So even sells, they don't increase the price, they, they still drop the price, but not as much as if there were no sell fee. Um, so in that way, uh, the way I describe it is we've skewed it so if there's 53% buy sells and there's 47% buys, the chart should trade sideways. Mm. Okay, yeah. Pretty... It sounds very well thought out. Um, I was wondering if you could explain briefly why Vault and Surge make the perfect team. Well, um, I would just say because of, especially now that you can choose which reflection token you want back, uh, it's especially, ben they're, they're especially beneficial um, to each other in the fact that uh, you can now, you, so you take advantage, you, you would, you, you get further advantage of people who sell that asset quickly, quickly. And uh, people mm -hmm. that want to hold that asset for a long period of time, um, get that advantage. So if you really like Bitcoin and you want to get Bitcoin vault and have your reflections and search Bitcoin, the longer you hold Bitcoin, the more Bitcoin you're going to be able to, to, to redeem from that, uh, from those reflections. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it kind of goes with our ecosystem of really locking tokens away in a vault, you know, and really letting them appreciate mm -hmm. as opposed to just getting Bitcoin vet back and uh, eventually selling that Bitcoin. You know, it, this gives you an extra way to uh, to really let your money sit and grow and uh, and to be your own bank in, in, a, in a way. Instead of just giving back a standard token, you get back an appreciating version of okay, a token. Awesome. So yeah. it, it is very, uh, it's a cool partnership. And um, of course, the extra volume helps Surge in just the way that, you know, Surge works. Mm -hmm. But the way Surge is run is uh, there's not really ownership, um, very minimal owner functions. Uh, there, there's really nothing yeah. anyone can do that anyone else can't do to it. So um, it kind of runs on its own. It's kind of its own beast. Um, I, even mm -hmm. though I wrote it, I don't claim that I own it. Um, it's just, I it's a contract that, that, runs, that runs on itself. So um Definitely the attention from Vault helps it and it helps Vault mm. in the in this whole um it being your own helps aspect. us. 
Yes, yes. It helps us with appreciation. It helps us with the ability to develop together. Uh, for me, you know, collaborations working together on, you know, one or more projects that'll not only just like assess us in common goals and getting us to where we want to be, but also benefits both of our teams and our investors by having this partnership, yeah. and this collaboration. It's worked really well for us. I feel, you know, really blessed to have Mark as a visionary ahead of both of the teams. And um, mm. really where we go from here, you know, is limitless because of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking like kind of in terms of, you know, probably people on the call, some of them are invested in eFault and SafeVault. Um, how will Vault BFC, B, BTC benefit both of those? I'll just uh, reiterate that really quick. If that's all right. So um, there's going to be, it's about 10% um, of the fee from sales. So it's not a 10% of the fee total, but um, say hmm. 20 thousand dollars is retrieved from the hundred dollar cell like we were talking about earlier uh ten percent yeah. of that so two thousand seven hundred would be allocated toward a contract i wrote that's that divvies it up and buys and burns the other two vault tokens so okay. in an event that um bitcoin vault falls dramatically for some reason a big sell-off mm -hmm. it would uh, yeah. have the reverse effect on the other two vaults it would uh it would kick it back to them um from buying and ah, directing so it would raise the the floor for those tokens a little bit as um because traditionally the, the problem with re buying and reflecting it even though people like obviously getting more reflections is those tokens can still be sold you know it buys the tokens and it sends it to people and those people can still mm -hmm. just sell it, bringing it back to normal uh the cool thing about buying and then burning them is those tokens that were bought the bnb that was in there um those aren't going to be redeemed again no one's going to Put those back into liquidity and get the get the bnb back uh, they're just directly burned yeah. that bnb just sits in there uh, and it raises the floor over time in that way yeah and reassesses the market share of what each of the investors are able to get because of it it's nice yeah, it yeah. yeah it sounds really interesting um i was wondering if you could maybe talk about your audit you know what audit company did you did you use and were there any you know warnings or recommendations yeah, we, we use Certic. Uh, for me, that's the kind of gold standard for auditing. I, I know Mark probably feels the same way about it. Uh, we've been blessed, in my opinion, with having not only an amazing business development team that's working on our contracts, but we've kind of been afforded mm -hmm. a unique situation because many tokens who do go to audit are an individual token, and they certainly aren't a multi-token uh, company like ourselves. Uh, both Mark's company, or I, you know, both Surge, because it's not an owned company, but Surge as well as Vault DeFi um, are both multi-token partnerships with Certic. Uh, it allows us to have access to the, the development team and their auditing team kind of on call. Usually you have to book your audit. It can take weeks, if not months, to uh, have it assessed, have the recommendations uh, looked after, and then have the preliminary reports turned over from not only an onboarding position, but being fully confirmed. Um, this allows us um, to secure not only our contracts, but to ensure that our investors internationally have access to the Skynet service, which is their market sentiment service that uses kind wow. of the most powerful oracles in the world. So um, they look mm. at many different factors. So uh, whether that's social factors, whether that's just a, a larger cells that are happening on our charts, whether that's something mm. personal related to founders or developers, or if we've changed some personnel, uh, it literally monitors all of that 24 uh, seven. Here, most of us maybe don't realize, but in the first and even the second world areas uh, globally, we do have access to many types of platforms that allow us to get different forms of communication, news, um, updates. Yeah. But there are many places in the world that don't have access to them because they've been censored. Uh, Certic allows the, the um, investors to be able to access their websites, which are usually available without censorship, and they're able to check on their investment utilizing these audit services. Um, we've scored quite well. We're happy with it. And we have uh, their, their business development team working around the clock to ensure that we do stay at a high level. Um, currently, we're about mm -hmm. to release Bitcoin tomorrow. Uh, that's been onboarded with them for some time. They've been working on our code with us, ensuring that it is as secure as it right. can possibly be. We're really happy with it. Yeah. I know, Mark, you're happy with yeah. it too. I know Surge is also uh, utilizing uh, both services from Surtech as well. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really promising. Uh, we all like Certic and liquidity. Yeah. Those are the two things that big investors uh, like to look for. So that, that's great. Um, yeah. We have a question. For... Sorry, were you going to say something else? 
I wasn't. No, I apologize. Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, so this is a question from Twitter. Um, it says, DeFi has three areas, DEX, total assets, and loans. What exactly is Vault DeFi focusing on? For us, we're total assets right now. Um, we'll probably be looking certainly into moving into more of a fluid style of DEX system. Um, I'm personally not a large fan of a centralized DEX and or even some of the decentralized ones in the way that the market makers work and uh, kind of how it impacts uh, the overall the overall investor's benefit. Uh, that said, mm -hmm. Uh, we're certainly interested in uh, developing and innovating things that maybe are better than that. Uh, I know that uh, Surge also feels maybe similar about that, and Mark is always innovating to get something better. Yeah, I'll hint on this. I, I don't want to speak much on it, but um, yeah, so I, I also don't like Texas and some of the ways that they work. So we've, we've found a way to uh, <laughs> include a DEX into a liquidity pool in a really cool way that will... Um, allow for people to trade outside of pancake swap and, and take away some of that uh, third party dependency. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about it soon, but basically, yeah, you, you take a DEX and you put it into an LP token and you let people trade through the LP token in a way that um, instead of a small percentage going to cake or going mm -hmm. to liquidity providers, it goes right back into that token's liquidity to benefit the liquidity to providers. The whole, yeah. So um, it's a really cool idea. We're using it for surge and I'm going to be generalizing it to work for any tokens that want um, truly decentralized trading. Cause uh, there's, there's not going to be ownership of these. They're just going to be um, tools that uh, run on their own, just independent contracts. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, great. Um, just another question from uh, Twitter here. Um, how can Vault DeFi differentiate itself from others? And it also touched upon some high selling fees. How can you uh, justify that? Oh, I was just going to say the main justification um, for the selfie in, in my mind is the fact that uh, users um, You'll hold Vault not only because you think uh, it's a, you, you might not hold it just because you think it's a good investment, just but just because you like um, having an appreciating version of a token that, that you um, enjoy. So if you really like Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, part of the value isn't just in holding the Vault token and having that rise or fall. Um, th that, that's good in its own right. But from, a, from another standpoint, a lot of people just like being able to just receive um, these tokens that they like, however often, um, whenever there's market movement. So whether the price goes up or down, um, that, that almost, it, it matters, but it doesn't matter as um, drastically to a lot of holders because when there is huge swings downwards, they notice a huge kick to uh, uh, tokens that they like. So um, I used that example before, but having a, a good market share in this way um, allows you to benefit from um, people that do sell down. And it, it, pe people do take profits. It's not like people get cornered into a yeah. box where they don't sell down. If there if there's drastic movement upwards, uh, people will the thirty percent will be justified enough to have people sell down, oh, yeah. which further fuels the reflections for everyone else. So at first, it was a hard concept for me to grasp at the beginning. It it really was, but I've seen it work um, better than I was initially expecting in the way that uh, like I, I don't care necessarily how it's doing. Um, chart wise as i know that i get the, the amount of kickbacks i'll receive um mm -hmm. are greater so it, it, it is quite, pretty interesting um and if you do want to exit the ecosystem you, you really do have to pay tribute to everyone else that's holding by by giving them your 30 yeah. percent as reflections yeah yeah that seems uh seems reasonable i think you know if you're going to sell the talk and then you should be rewarding the holders who are you know doing long-term holding uh, and like you say, if the chart's going upwards, then people may be inclined to sell. They should pay the 30% tax. I think that's really that's reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. Um, and there's some, uh, so rewarding long-term holders is something, uh, something we've been looking into. Mm -hmm. I've been looking into specifically for a while. Um, uh, again, this is still coming down the pipeline, so I won't touch on it too much, but, uh, I created this it's, it's generalized, so it'll work with all tax tokens, but we're going to be debuting it with, uh, with both, um, the useless team I'm on and, um, and vault at the same time, we're both going to be utilizing this. Um, it, it's a it's a token locker system. So what it what it'll do is it'll allow people to 
lock up their vault for extended periods of time. And if they wait the desired time, um, they can sell at reduced fees. So for instance, you could, uh, so the, th the sell fee is 30% and that's not going anywhere. So what you could do is you could say, okay, I'm going to hold this token for nine months. So we have, we'll have a token locker where say, if you lock your tokens up immediately, you can sell, but there's going to be like a 70% fee. And that's horrible. Nobody would want to do that. But every day that goes by, that fee drops by say 0 0.1, 0 0.25%. Um, so if you wait the allotted time, if you wait, say, six months, you might be at the 30% range again. And then if you wait nine months to a year, you could effectively sell tax free. And uh, what that does is even though it, it goes against the whole reflections thing, it really, it benefits you because you know that um, you're, uh, it's going to stabilize um, the chart and the, and the massive movements from whales and people alike, because uh, they'll be able to receive their reflections um, while those tokens are locked. Um, but they'll be able to exit, uh, in time. It's a promise to wait a certain period of time before exiting. Uh, and you, you get benefited with a reduced fee for that. And if, and if people do decide to, to paper hand after when their mm -hmm. tokens are locked, um, there's an even larger fee that goes fee. towards everyone else. So it, it's like a, an accentuated version of the current system we have with a 30% fee, but a way to really reward people who are looking to hold long-term. Um, and that nine months a year thing that that's variable, um, that that's not set in stone at all. Th those time frames could be anything, but, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a really cool, uh, really cool system. Making yeah. It's a that. unique way to look at staking is what it is. It's an innovative way to do staking where the yeah. investors are more in control. More locking than staking, but yeah. Yeah. I guess it's the right term. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, so this move upon to the strategy then, um, just how do you plan to stay relevant? in this change in an emerging space, like what are you going to do? Well, I well, think, I think we innovating. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just staying on top of it. Um, the space is changing every day and uh, there's there's so much that not only needs to be done, but can easily be done because there's not many people on it. Like every week I find a new project that, I, that I'm working on that'll improve the space a little bit. Um, 90, I'm pretty positive it's going to uh, debut soon is the uh, token, uh, a version of the token launch platform that'll yeah. allow a DX sale type of a system, but without that, that's, a, that's impervious to bots. So it can't be botted. It can be, uh, there, there's, well, the, the ability to bot it is greatly reduced, reduced and requires a lot more work and it, it can't be done with code. It would have to be manually done. Um, mm. In the, in the way in the way I was talking about it but but regardless uh, there, there's always new things like that there's always new things that, that can be done and will be done and um, I try to incorporate all of the new I don't always want to say innovations because I've heard that term too much lately uh, mm -hmm. it kind of makes me cringe now mm -hmm. but all the new things it's <laughs> everything's an innovation um, right now in DeFi. A everything is so as, yeah. as long as uh, as long as there's developers constantly looking at what what's next what are, what are the new things? Uh, this token locker idea and system only came about about a week and a half ago. Um, mm -hmm. And that's already done. It's getting audited. And we're going to have results for that soon to, to kickstart that and get that going. And then it's what's next. You know, what else can we do? Uh, mm -hmm. The X tokens are a really cool thing that I'm looking forward to uh, doing. And all that is, is it lets you lock up your Bitcoin vault in exchange for another token that's worth okay, the yeah. same. It's a, it's a one to one pegged ratio with Bitcoin vault. So we're going to be exploring that for a little while, as I think that's a really cool innovation that isn't really seen much in the space right now. Um, and then after that, it's it's what's next, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think staying relevant's the problem really, because no. we do have a good group of uh, of thinkers that uh, mm -hmm. that tries to get that done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just want to we want to add as much as we can to DeFi space in general and assist with kind of mass adoption, people feeling more comfortable with what they're doing, uh, certainly becoming yeah. more confident, becoming your own bank, because really that's what decentralized finance is going to be. Uh, the more and more of us that are able to adapt and feel a little bit more comfortable with the choices we're making. And then, of course, having teams like ourselves that are allowing us to make more and more choices are going to allow for that mass adoption to kind of take effect quicker and in a more comfortable fashion. So Mark's right. you know. Um, really you know just staying above the curve is going to be what we're trying to do constantly is bringing more and more mm -hmm. to the table i'm super excited about what we do next every every day we talk we talk about something new and that's the exciting part yeah. of working in a collaboration and working with a team that gets along like we do 
Um, it's just, it's been a really unique experience, just not only in my own personal career, but I know like working with Mark, uh, I'm, I'm, I really, like, I don't mean it. Like, I really mean like it is limitless. We have so many abilities mm. to do so many things in so many different spaces. So it's exciting. I'm excited to talk about it with you guys too. Okay. So uh, I'm excited as well about it. Um, you talk about mass adoption. Uh, mm -hmm. how are you, how are you going to get more eyes on it? Well, I think for us right now, um, I'm looking to branch out and uh, utilize my ability in blockchain and some of the partnerships and things I've done over my career uh, to bring our space uh, forward. Um, right now, we're utilizing mm -hmm. centralized market and assets that uh, are being wrapped through the Surge product, as well as just some of the partners or collaborations that we're doing within the DeFi space, our, our own teams, our own groups of um, friends might yeah. not be the right term, but our own groups of, uh, of colleagues together that we're utilizing these systems with but the truth is what mark's developed with um with surge what we have here with vault can be applied to many different types of commodities different synthetic mm -hmm. assets uh mm -hmm. so like longevity for us is going to be branching out to the ability to have other assets being uh, made available becoming more flexible yeah. for the uh for the investor cross-chain management um lots of different options not just bridging but the ability to potentially utilize other um other technologies uh, that we can use to benefit the investor uh, and bring more eyes and more attention to us. Um, I'm really excited to be able to be one of the speakers that'll be um, at the um, World Blockchain Summit next year in the first quarter of 22. Um, I know that I'll be bringing Mark with me for the stage for that. Uh, I hope that there'll be a lot of eyes on us there. There generally is, and it's 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 anticipated to be the biggest uh, crypto and blockchain summit that's ever existed before, and certainly the wow. biggest one that North America will be seeing. So we're we're excited. You know, we have a lot ahead of us, and getting to see more and more people will certainly be uh, bridging a little bit further out from the BSC network, uh, allowing more and mm. more of the other blockchains to see our technology. Uh, different things like that. And I know Mark's interested, you know, he's a visionary in his own right. And he really, uh, you know, like I say, it's limitless. We're just, we're just at the beginning of everything right now. Yeah, so I kind of sit in my room, yeah. I kind of sit in my corner and uh, do my, uh, <laughs> do, do, do my typing. Uh, but Jen, Jen's good at getting, being heard. Uh, she can get a meeting with anyone. Um, I've seen it. Uh, awesome. If Jen wants to talk to you, she's going to be talking to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good, it's it's a good person to have um, up front. Definitely. Thanks. I appreciate want. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see a lot of love in, in, in the uh, team. It's great. Um, so, yeah, there is conferences coming up all over the world at the moment, you know, in Dubai, in London, uh, where yeah. I am in Manchester, there's a crypto conference, uh, Monaco, you know, in Europe, mm -hmm. there's, they're coming up all over the place and you can see uh, that it's becoming more mainstream. I know I was speaking to my parents, they were like, oh, you can buy Bitcoin and PayPal, uh, you know, like kind of because there's an option there for them and all of a sudden they're interested because they perceive it as being safe now. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see like kind of there's, there's a mass adoption. They want to invest for the first time. They've always been really wary. Uh, but I think it's really exciting that, the you know, you're at the beginning of DeFi and it sounds like you've got the right connection to, you know, make it be seen. So that, that's amazing. Um, so just to talk, talk upon like kind of the marketing side, you know, who are your primary investors, where are they from? Are they from Asia, America, Europe? And, you know, is there any particular markets that you're going to be targeting in the short and long term? Yeah, so I think right now, um, we're certainly globally, uh, we're globally out in the market right now. I noticed the majority of the holders from my uh, analytics and looking through most of what I do on the back end is generally North America, European, uh, we have some South Pacific. Um, we're currently targeting to move more of our eyes and attention into the Middle East, into Africa, a little bit more into South America. Um, I think probably over the next six to eight months, you'll see us do as many campaigns as we can, not only just with publications, but uh, myself speaking a little bit more often. Um, we're utilizing currently right now kind of like your formal reciprocals for marketing, your, your Twitter, your social media, uh, your YouTube. Mm. Um, our team has established an academy. We're trying to come uh, to our investors and to new eyes from kind of a different uh, perspective, which is kind of learning uh, cryptocurrency, mm. blockchain, uh, trying to trying to start from like the, the beginning, from the bottom, from where most people have kind of been discouraged and brought away from looking at and trying to teach people from a secured position or at least a trustworthy one, uh, everything you need to know about it. Um, sorry, I'm just going to take that off one second.
Yeah, no problem at all. My apologies there. Um, so I guess targeting audiences, specifically for me being a woman, it's incredibly important that I bring my female voice to the stage. I want um, many women to feel comfortable in talking to me about what they do long term, short term with investment strategies. I think that yeah. we are overlooked, generally speaking, in many different aspects of industry. But when we talk about mm. investment strategies and taking care of families and long term development for your children or your retirement funds, um, even uh, taking care of ailing parents. These are all things that generally fall under the cloud of many women in society globally. So um, whether yeah. that's us here in the first world or we're talking about women and children in the third world, developing products uh, that we have uh, can make a big difference for people. They're secure. They're a little bit uh, better in terms of long term. As Mark was touching on, we're developing many different types of our technology to benefit long term holders, to benefit people who mm. have uh, the concept to keep their investments and to um, to monitor them themselves kind of from their own kind of bank perspective. Um, for me, uh, I can just kind of quote like a small amount here. If, if you were investing into a vault product um, off launch, let's say you're making uh, eight to 10 or $12 a day in an American comparable dollar, uh, that type of money is life changing for many across the globe. Uh, we might look mm. at it as a coffee fund here, but it certainly is not a coffee fund in the second and third developing nations. And um, oh. when we talk about women in those areas and how they make money in those economies can be rather difficult. So for me, branching out and marketing uh, in the first world will certainly be one way, but trying to get out and on a global perspective for others is going to be rather dynamic and might require some strategic methods that I'm working on with many different types of um, partners. So that looks like, you know, universities and different types of schools, some types of agencies within some of those communities that we can get access mm -hmm. to and see if we can partner with not only tech development so that they can get their hands onto smartphone applications so that they can interact mm -hmm. with wallets and the exchanges in ways that we can here um, will assist me and certainly begin becoming um, more successful with bringing on more and more holders of the type of people that I'm looking to help with. Yeah, it seems like you have quite the vision. Uh, and yeah, I, I agree in terms of, um, you know, educating people uh, is really important, you know, to bring that trust, you know, the, when my, for instance, my parents, if they were going to invest into it, you know, mm -hmm. they, they need to find out more about it because, you know, they're, they're a bit concerned and a bit, you know, like, a bit more worried I'd say than say me because I have a higher level of understanding about it uh, but for them coming in as a first time you know investor to your product they'd really want to see some educational videos starting with the basics to be honest because uh, they don't understand any of it so um, you know like kind of I think the more that you can educate people the more likely you are to bring in people that wouldn't necessarily come into crypto and you, you touch upon uh, you know females or women, uh, you know, and I think that's really important. And I love the idea of, um, you know, allowing people to earn a passive income. Uh, and like you say, there is a differentiation, you know, some people invest like $2 into a coin and people like, as if they're investing coffee money or McDonald's money. I see the comments in these BSC projects, but yes. for some people that's like, a, you know, a day's wage, or even a week's wage, Absolutely. you know, so it's a lot, a, a lot of money to them. So everyone's earning, you know, different amounts of money. Uh, and it's great to see that you're targeting, you know, you're not excluding anyone because I think we should target all markets. And yeah, there's countries in Africa that, are, you know, mm -hmm. like the whole, you know, countries that are corrupt as well, you know, the government, mm -hmm. um, and they can operate on crypto more effectively in South America as well. You know, you see in uh, Paraguay and Mexico adopting Mexico. Bitcoin. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you touch right on it. It is, it really is the truth. Um, Cryptocurrency is going to allow for a lot more flexibility and a lot more options and availability for people to not only just change their own personal lives, but the lives of the people they care most about. Um, what we don't realize mm -hmm. is that most of us who have grown up in the world we live in today, uh, the way that assets and or uh, d your investments or your parents' investments work is gener generally they're generational. They work for 80 years and they don't necessarily pass on. We're programmed to purchase property. We're, we're, we're programmed to sell 
sell our properties. We're, we're told to sell them when you get to a certain age, put your money into the banking system, mm -hmm. set up your retirement fund, have that as your passive income and leave a small amount to your children that are left behind. But the truth is, this is the first time that we're moving into an age of digitalized assets. And these have a longevity that we're not even sure that that what that looks like yet. Uh, this could be three, mm -hmm. four, 500 years, these types of assets that we're purchasing today. So I think it's just like a unique time to be a part of not only investing, but specifically investing into digital synthetics, um, the ability to have the blockchain, which is immutable. It's there forever. It's always going to be something that we can have. Um, I just think like it's a unique, unique time and super excited to be a, on a team of people that are um, able to see a vision long, long term. Not, not in the short term. We're looking really, really long term with what we're building. Mm. Yeah, it seems so, both with the technology and like the strategy in terms of, uh, you know, marketing and bringing awareness, uh, you know, and bringing different people from different countries and backgrounds on board. Uh, it sounds really inspiring. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious about your, like your community. Um, so you have, uh, is it one Telegram group or do you have a few or? I think we have one main Telegram group. Uh, I believe that we'll probably be branching off for other languages. We certainly get requests for that on a regular basis. Um, I'm just mm. trying to establish who will be like the leaders of the community. We need to ensure that obviously we have around the clock coverage before we open it mm. up to, to, to not being, you know, um, 100%. I don't like to do things mm -hmm. here on Vault, DeFi, or I know Surge is the same. Unless we can completely do it to the maximum potential, then we'll wait until we yeah. can. Uh, but we do, we have Telegram, we have Discord, we have a large amount of Vault Army and Surge Army within the um, Twitter sphere here in North America. Mm. It's quite a big deal. Um, I'm trying to think what other major platforms do we have. We utilize GitHub, we utilize... Um, Reddit, we utilize, uh, what are the other ones? I guess like Facebook groups. We have kind of a, mm. a large social presence that we'll always be looking to establish even bigger and bigger. And, you know, even just being able to sit with your group today is establishing us the ability to use our voice and share what we're doing with others. And hopefully we have yeah. more and more people come over and hear what we're doing and want to see what we're doing and learn with our academy. Our academy right now is trying to target whether that's three to five videos a week. We've kind of been doing three to five videos a day at this point. So um, mm. it's it's an it, we're trying our very best to make sure that people feel really comfortable um, coming over, trusting us, listening to us. Uh, they're not necessarily and feeling the pressure to uh, go ahead and have to um, invest. Uh, I don't come from a place of mm. shilling. I don't think it's necessary. I think that if people want to hear what you're doing and think that it is something that they feel comfortable being a part of, then the numbers will definitely start to speak for themselves. That's the beauty of yeah. being involved in decentralized finance. And if you do it the right way, which is what we're trying our very best to do here on both of our teams, um, then people who invest in us will see the benefit long term. Yeah. Uh, and is there any community incentives? Like, um, you know, you mentioned, obviously, there is a passive income. Is there, is there any other community incentives at all? Any competitions, et cetera? Hmm. I don't have any currently running, but I guess we do. We uh, we certainly incentivize when we're doing our new launches. We've just been doing a campaign currently for whitelist positions that allow people to get access into uh, the next token slightly before mm -hmm. they go to public market. Um, I'm trying to think what else do we do in terms of our community for incentivizing. We have, you know, merchandise and things like that that we do. I know that um, I don't want to just speak for you there, Mark, but I know that Surge is also about to do an auction on really unique tokens. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, they're unique. They're glow in the dark. They're, uh, I don't know enough about the market. <laughs> you might want to jump in and talk about it if you do, but I know that your team is about to go live with some sort of an auction that's going to allow investors to get access to one of a kind, uh, unique tokens that are part of the uh, surge lineup, but they're physical tokens you'll keep in your own hand at home. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're, they're doing a, um, physical tokens, not like uh, blockchain tokens, like, um, mm -hmm actual round coins uh but they're pretty cool um mm -hmm. they, they are glow in the dark yeah i can't wait to get mine <laughs> i'm curious so yeah we try yeah. to do cool stuff like that all the time um and send them out to our you know like all of our investors and keep them interacting with us so yeah usually trying to keep on top of that awesome uh okay then so i just got a question from twitter uh why should our investors listening choose you Not sure if I can hear you there. If you're unmuted, I'm not sure. 
generally. I couldn't hear there. I heard why could the investors and then it, I didn't hear anything else. Uh, sorry, so uh, why, why should our investors choose you? I want to say, why not? <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> um, I think that investors who are looking to get into a reflection based token, um, why wouldn't you want to get involved with one that isn't necessarily just a one token option? It has tokens that um, work complementary amongst their own group of tokens. So all of our vault tokens will always try and contribute to the other tokens amongst our lineup. But um, mm. yeah, I'd say the real collaboration with other teams. Sorry, mm -hmm. I thought I think. No, go right in, Mark. I did. I was, Someone was yeah. calling. I think. Uh, yeah, I think the real benefit comes from um, the the reflectionary aspect of it. Uh, yeah. Personally, I, I enjoy I, I I enjoy holding the vaults just for this um, appreciation of my favorite top tier coin lineup, uh, whether it be mm -hmm. Ethereum mm -hmm. or Bitcoin or any of those. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, people like uh, buying things that uh, will yield fruit for them down the line, of course, as well. And I, I don't know, we're probably not allowed to comment on price action, but uh, the fee structure in, in this in, in this newer one, um, I'm very thing, excited yeah. to see how it debuts um, and how it interacts with the market, it's specifically the whole uh, direct burn on, on buy and transfer and um, the increased uh, reflection percentages on sales. I, I think it's going to be very interesting and very uh very beneficial to long-term holders, mm -hmm. uh, especially as we build out these new um, ecosystem pieces, such mm -hmm. as uh, locking tokens and uh, getting getting benefits of holding long periods of time, and X tokens, which will allow um, more uh, more um, movement to happen within one token, like Bitcoin Vault, but in a way that mm -hmm. uh, increases everyone else's market share. So, if we were to make an X token, we if we made it off of Bitcoin Vault. Uh, the users that hold the X token, um, the, the way you have an X token is you lock up a native asset. So you'd be locking up your Bitcoin vault to have it. And the Bitcoin yeah. vault that's locked up wouldn't be gaining reflections. So if you mm -hmm. had a 1% market share and 50% of the tokens were locked up in, in X tokens, you would then technically have 2% market share mm -hmm. of all the reflections that happen. Uh, so the, the, there's many cool ways, uh, different ways to incentivize people to hold... Um, Hold, hold different options depending on what they like um, in a way that uh, maximizes uh, rewards um, and incentive for long-term holders. Which Perfect. is all passive income at the end of the day to the investor. So it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great concept. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and there's a pre-sale, a pre-sale coming up tomorrow, I believe. Could you just touch yes. upon that in the launch? Sure. Yeah, we're um, we have presale. It'll go off tomorrow, which is uh, two o'clock uh, Eastern time here. Um, I believe that works out to be seven o'clock p.m. in the UK, and then um, let's just say twelve hours difference over in um, the South Asia Pacific, and eight hours again for um, the Middle East, or five hours in Africa. But ideally, it's two o'clock p.m. here in um, Eastern time. Uh, that'll mm. open up 400 um, positions for presale. I believe we're going to hard cap it there. Uh, the minimum purchase will be 0 0.1 BNB to get in, and the maximum allotted mm. amount will be one full BNB. Right. Perfect. And uh, I think that's just about it. So if, if, if you'd like to maybe do a closing statement, and then we'll do, I believe we're going to do a giveaway on the call for some whitelist positions. Sure. Um, I guess I, I just want to say thank you. I uh, really, really appreciate you giving myself and Mark the floor this afternoon to talk about our projects, to talk about um, our, our excitement in being in DeFi, specifically allowing us to talk about our products that allow for passive income opportunities to many people throughout the world who've been previously denied. Um, we just have a true passion for what we're doing. Uh, we are fueled by our desires to educate and kind of keep awareness to the untapped possibilities of what can happen uh, with decentralized finance mm -hmm. moving forward. So thank you for having us. And I'll let Mark just say his bit there as well. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, it was nice talking to everyone, answering some questions. Uh, really exciting stuff coming up for sure. Uh, yeah, the DeFi space is young. Yeah. Uh, always needs more people in it, so. Anything we can do to incentivize developers, uh, holders, more people to enter the space, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I'm very excited about what you've said. Uh, I can see you're really passionate about it. 
uh, and I'm looking forward to what's coming up. Uh, you're welcome to, you know, come into the chat anytime and share updates, and we'll be covering the updates on, you know, Twitter as well as you progress through the next token, uh, and we'll talk more in the future. I think for now we're going to do uh, the, the giveaway for, is it for two or three whitelist positions, Jen? Yeah, sure, go for it. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy to uh, have so you. I think we would do, we're going to do a random uh, giveaway. So, XOXO, are you okay to share screen? Um, yeah, let me get everybody's name first, and then I'll share the screen. There's 121 of you guys, so it'll take me a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, if, if, we have, if we have a little bit of time, I, I don't mind filling it in. I just want to say thank you, Mark, uh, for coming here. It's really excited to see people that are actually innovating in, in the DeFi space and uh, allowing us uh, liquidity providers to just trade away the, the impermanent losses for fixed taxes and just to, uh, to, to, to trade away the, the staking and unstaking the second day to something where uh, I can just leave it there for, I don't know, my, my favorite asset, like you said, for three months, t 10 months, whatever, and, and, and just get an appreciating asset. And yeah, there's, there's no question there is something uh, really exciting. And I rarely tell people what I do with my money, but I'm, I'm really interested in this. And I, I just want to thank you for, for coming in and sharing this opportunity with us. It's, it's been great. Of course, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's really exciting stuff. I, I love talking about it. So never have to thank me for, uh, for getting to nerd out with you guys. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's well, thank not... Thank you. Yeah. It's not every day that, that we get really, really interesting projects. And re I mean, everybody brings uh, m their own gimmicks to the table and everybody puts their own twist to it. But when you see people that are really passionate and they are really bringing I innovative, uh, uh, not projects, but actually products to the DeFi space. Well, yeah, my friend, this this is what we're all here for. So, yeah, it's, it's great. So nice of you to say that. Thank you. And while we're, while we're waiting for Wheel, if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to ask uh, Jen and Mark. Or any comments, you know, feel free to jump in. This is a neat little randomizer. <laughs> it's all custom we used for to do this for cash prizes. A little pizzazz. Mm -hmm. It's nice. nice. Love technology. Look how fair that is. No, yeah, but it's, it's a great hammer. I'm very interested and I'll, I'll be at the launch for sure. Uh, I think a lot of the group will be, you know, there and supporting you. It's a, a very interesting project. I'm surprised I've not heard about it before, to be honest. Like, this is the first time I've heard about the Vault DeFi full stop. That means I need to pick it up a little bit more and make our marketing a little bit more aware. So thanks for letting me know, Robotic. I will be doing that. We've been working really heavily on development and making sure that we kind of hit our timelines. And like I said, because we're multi-token, we do have to work with the third-party auditor, which keeps us pretty consistently busy. But, mm. you know, moving out and making sure that people can see what we have is definitely going to be the foremost of importance moving forward for us, as well as for Surge. It's important that people see that these things are available. It's not just a, a decentralized market where you're going into, you know, meme coins or non-utility products, potentially stuff that you're just kind of buying and crossing your fingers. To me, there's nothing worse than opening up your portfolio, your digital wallet portfolio, kind of looking at it and wondering what these things are and why you bought them. I'd like to see people mm -hmm. opening them up and really looking at each individual asset, understanding what those assets are and the longevity of what you're purchasing. Kind of like what Mark was touching on there, what he was saying, you know, for him, the appreciation factor of being able to have an asset that you um, believe in long term. So whether that's Ethereum or something like Bitcoin, which is what we're releasing tomorrow. Um, if you believe mm -hmm. in those coins, to be able to have something that uh, develops around it uh, for longevity for you to be protected is unique in itself. So I think getting our word out and getting people to see that these things exist in DeFi are going to be really important and imperative to our success. So again, thank you for letting us have the floor today. I really appreciate it, Robotic. Yeah, we've all enjoyed it. It's been a, a very good armor, uh, you know, and um, it's just very, very exciting to be at the beginning of something that's this new and innovative I can see that you've got a lot of developments, you know, that have both come and are, are coming in the future. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely be investing. And I'm sure many of the people on the call will be as well. I really want to win this whitelist. I hope I'm on the giveaway as well. 
I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a literally all. I just wanted to mention to everyone here that's listening, um, I'm really proud of having the core team and development crew that we have here, and we are really transparent and available to our community at all times. So if any one of you is listening here today that has any questions, I don't want you to feel like you can't come up and ask or DM any one of us directly. Um, it's important to me that uh, the confidence that you instill in yourself to become uh, comfortable doing some of your own investing and banking strategies come from being able to talk to people like myself and our developers directly. So um, it's kind of a unique thing that we do here. And uh, I just want to make sure everybody here listening knows that you're absolutely available to us anytime for anything and any question and is available. Like your voices matter to my team and it helps us develop and innovate uh, better concepts for long term and longevity of your assets and your, your liquidity that you are putting up into our product. So, yeah, just want to say that. Perfect. Thank you. It goes without saying as well that you doxed. Uh, we can see your names. Uh, so, um, yeah, we didn't really touch upon that. Sometimes we get projects where we can't see who they are. So it's refreshing I'm to see. Happy to turn my camera on at any time, Robotic. Yeah. <laughs> Generally do That's in any of my main spaces. Yeah. Yeah. We're doxed over here and happy to be. It's important you know who you're trusting with your money, in my opinion. So happy to have you. Know us. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we didn't really touch upon the team. How many people are on it, if you don't mind sharing? Uh, the team itself, uh, we have our core group of us, which is six. Uh, three of them are in development. Uh, we have a back group of engineers that work directly with our DAP development, DAP system development, um, our website development. And then we also have a little bit of an executive branch that works with uh, investor relations, community response. Um, so I would say we're probably looking at a team of maybe 10 to 12 that work kind of executive management level up to core team and mm. development. And then below that, we have uh, roughly 40 moderators on our team. Uh, those wow. are the people that I would love to just give a shout out to. They are a huge help in the success of us. Surge IES as well will probably have 20 to 30 people working on their team. They are volunteers on the Surge side and uh, their time mm -hmm. is invaluable. We appreciate them beyond words. Um, but I'd also mm -hmm. like to give a big shout out to my main community here today who made this available to us. Uh, they brought uh, your group to me and my team. They let us know that the Whale Coin Talk people existed. Uh, they let us know that something like this was even available for us to do. Um, so it's mm. incredibly important that I'm able to just say a big thank you to them for making it available to myself and Mark to come over here. So thanks, guys. And thank you to all of our um, volunteers, all of the team that's been put together. And uh, we can only be as successful as the group who hold this up. And just really grateful to all of them as well. Wow. wow. Thank you for that. Um, I think that we may be ready to spin the wheel, are we, XOXO? Yes, yes. we are ready. So we're going to do the first go. one for the whitelist? Yeah, I think it's three spins, yeah. All right. First spin. Here's one. Trey is the winner. All right, Trey. Congrats. Congrats, Trey. MB is the second winner. And we get a lot of people trying to scam us, so um, we will... If you can stay on the call, like kind of so we can DM you while you're on the call, uh, because we've had a lot of people try scammers recently for, you know, white list positions and money, etc. cetera. So uh, we'll DM you if, if you stay on the call, please. The third winner is DGR Dan. Did you art done? Congratulations, you three. You in the whitelist position. So if you could stay on the call, then I, I would DM you uh, and then pass <clears throat> over your details. Yeah, I believe I already cool. DM Trey and MB already. And I'm going to do the last one too, to, just to make sure that they oh, stay perfect. here. Yeah. Just... Well, thank you for your time today. 
Yeah, thank you so much for the time. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Definitely. So also anyone that um that didn't get in this playlist position, a uh, cool thing about um the new vault token is as soon as it debuts on Pancake Swap, if you are trying to beat the herd and Pancake Swap takes a long time sometimes for some people, uh especially if there's a lot of traffic to it. We built um, pancake swap fun swapper functionality into Bitcoin Vault. So <laughs> once you have the contract address and it's on pancake swap, you just send you can just send BNB to the Bitcoin Vault address and it'll buy Bitcoin Vault for you and put it in your wallet. No more no wow. more some slippage. Yep. No more worrying about anything that you have difficult with when you're dealing with the market like that. We've developed it well so that it's easy. Um, um, I just wanted to say something. I, I, I haven't been able to find the third winner, the DIG gentleman. Um, I don't know if they left the chat. I just want to make sure we get them before we close this to give everyone a fair chance. Mm-hmm. Does that individual yeah. want to raise their hand or? Yeah, speak? he's still on there. He's at at Digi Art Dan. He's all the way at the bottom. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, this goes to uh, D5 Mark. Uh, what, can you repeat what you just said about the? Uh, you can send the. You can send it to the address. Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 So um, I don't know if you've seen any of the swapper contracts I've made for other tokens. Um, there's one out there for useless, for safe moon, for nobility. Um, the other we vault. Have them too. Yeah. Are uh, yeah. In- instead of having those be separate contracts, I just built that swapper functionality into Bitcoin Vault. So as long as Bitcoin Vault's on Pancake Swap, you can send BNB to it, and it'll create itself for you. Um, so you, you just send BNB to Bitcoin Vault, the address itself of the token, and it'll buy itself on PancakeSwap with that BNB and uh, give you the tokens back. Okay, so so let me, I'm, I'm a little new to this. So just pretty much uh, have my BNB and mm-hmm. press send and put in that address and then have much BNB and then it'll, it'll just send it to my wallet. My wallet. Yep. Yeah, you just yeah, add just that token to your wallet too. Oh wow! Yep. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a lot easier than going on a pancake swap and connecting your wallet and all that. Um, it'll just be instant. Uh, if it does fail, you all you have to do is just raise your gas a little bit. Um, uh, pancake swap calculates your gas for you, so you don't have to worry about it. But um, if your wallet application doesn't automatically do it, you'll want to set your gas to be like over a million. Like one two. Mm-hmm. One two, like uh, yeah. uh, uh one, two, one, one, yeah. one two million, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the only um, that's the only part that gives people a little trouble. And besides that, it's pretty easy. You just send it there, and the Bitcoin vaults deposited into your wallet. And I have I have a question for what what do you find the address? I've been looking for it. I couldn't find it for some reason. We don't have it's it. not out yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. It will be tomorrow. <laughs> You'll see it thought, tomorrow thought, after three o'clock. <laughs> Oh, after three o'clock. Okay, I thought yeah. I was tripping. I'm like, man, I can't find that. <laughs> no, so is you're it going good. To be, is it going to be in the Telegram or is it or just on the yeah, site? Yeah, it'll be in the Telegram, and then once it's live on the blockchain and we've moved through presale and uh, it goes to market, it'll be available on BSC Scan and across many avenues. We'll list onto Coin Market Cap, Coin Gecko. Um, you'll see it in our Discords. Yeah, but you'll see it across everywhere tomorrow, just around three o'clock. Hey, I sure do appreciate you. Got, I sure do appreciate y'all uh, transparency. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Jen. Hi. I'm ecstatic on winning, winning that whitelist spot, that final spot. Oh, yay. Good. Uh, I'm glad you I ju- it. just worried then when they were saying they couldn't find me. Believe me, I've been here from the very start. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I sent you a DM, my friend. I'm blind, clearly. Great stuff. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dizzle. <laughs> Check your DM, and we will work it from there, my friend. Okay, thank you. That's brilliant. That's Thank fine. you. Thanks for your time. It's been a brilliant day, um, Meg. Wonderful. Thanks for spending your afternoon here with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, this is going to be the last spin. It is for point two B and B for you guys um, showing up. I did add the vault team to it, so you guys could win as well. All right. Just going to shuffle real quick, and then go up to everybody. Care 
Daryl, he's one of our um, oh, nice. long-time sure member. Oh, for wonderful. sure got this guy, finally. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, he finally won, Corral. Congrats, Corral. I can't wait to send it to a scammer. Okay, so there's one more winner, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, there's one more winner on our Twitter, and that was a Twitter question. Uh, the question that I've chosen is, the DeFi has three areas, DEX, total assets, and loans. What is Vault uh, DeFi focusing on? So they'll receive 0.2 BNB as well. Uh, but that's everything for the AMA. Unless anyone's got any further questions, uh, that's, uh, that, that's a closure. Thank you all for coming. Hi. I just want to know, is this the Twitter contest as well? It was, I believe so, yes. Yeah, the Twitter contest, that was the, the winner for the Twitter contest. Uh, so we do two two different ones. So there's the spin the wheel, then there's the Twitter contest. So uh, I will respond to the Twitter person on Twitter. Uh, that was the question I just read out then. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, then we'll take care of everyone. I think uh, that, that's a closure. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having us. I want to be immortal, like a god in the sky. I want to be a silk flower, like I'm never going to die. I wanna live forever